the topic is very important uh, the reason why we have this topic is because um, I've read some of your assignments and I noticed that um, most people cannot understand the distinction between God's grace and His law yet and this is very important so I'm going to um, explain more clearly and also use examples okay now the topic is biblical support of how God's nature and grace motivate us to obey him so the biblical support does the Bible support that we notice that in many passages that um, the Bible uses his nature and his grace to motivate us to obey him to trust in him to live to love him to uh, have a close relationship with him to serve him to glorify him that God tell us how he's pleased with those who who wants to serve him who serve him and glorify him and God is very very happy so it's um, when we understand that then we know that when we obey God then God will always reward us and he'll give us strength and provision so this is very important to understand that uh, to motivate people so that when we preach to people people understand why it's important for us to glorify God and and to serve God okay here I explain why we should motivate people with God's grace why we should do that uh, because uh, most people are not used to motivating with people with God's grace they are just telling people what to do and this is typical just using the law you have to obey you have to do evangelism uh, God wants you to do that all this God wants us to do whatever we do that is the law the law means you know what are the commandments of God what we are supposed to do that is God's law and so uh, uh, I have read a recent assignment it's uh, mostly it is about uh, mostly is about uh, you know tell, uh, saying oh you have to obey you have to love God when you love God then you love people love God love people this is all the law what we obey now if we just tell people you should obey you should do this do that you should love God you should obey God then what happened is then after a while people just say I have to do it now the Bible does use many uh, ways to motivate us and mainly is his grace his nature and his grace okay so here I explain when people just motivate others with God's law people just feel the responsibility to obey so then when we just tell them you have to obey you have to preach the gospel you have to pray you have to read the Bible then and what they hear is they just have to obey they just have to do it when people understand how God has every resource and blessing in his hand and he will greatly bless those who sincerely love and serve him people will delight in God more and will have a stronger motivation to follow God in every single way okay so when people understand God is every resource all the resource we have is from God I have the heart to obey God and God has provided me with this uh, global fire missions ministries and and the support from some people that I can help uh, many uh, groups in Africa to, uh, to be able to have this live broadcast to have this training and when we trust in God God can provide for us he has the money he has the spiritual gifts he has some people as a resource and opportunities and everything is in his hand when we obey him when we serve him and when we love him with a sincere heart and we understand that he is very happy with that then we will be motivated because we know that when we love him and obey him he will bless us but many people don't see that they just tell people what to do just pushing people and then people just they just hear this message I have to obey I have to do this I have to do that we don't just tell people what to do we tell them the motivation 
So then, when they understand that God has all the resources and blessings in His hand, and He will greatly bless those who sincerely love and, and serve Him, then people will delight in God more. They will delight in God more, and will have a stronger motivation to follow God in every single way. Then people want to serve God and obey God. Now, I want to say that also there is a long motivation, but the long motivation should be the minor motivation. I'll explain that more. That sh people should be reminded that when they don't honor God, when they don't serve God, they have to, um, you know, God is not happy with them. And God can bring uh, discipline or punishment. Now, that should be a secondary motivation. It should not be the main motivation. And uh, when people don't obey God, what happens is they lose the best blessings that God wants to give them. God wants to give us the best blessings. When people think they can just take advantage of God, then they can lose the best blessings from God. And I want to take every blessing from God. So the key is not just to please the people around us, but to please God, to do things that God wants us to do. And then God is very happy and He will provide for us and bless us in every way. Then they will delight in God more. They'll enjoy God more. They understand that loving and serving God is the best that they can do for their lives. So when they love God and serve God, that is the best we can do for our lives. And then our whole life will be blessed. So I hope we we'll all see that to live in the grace of God is the best that we can enjoy Him. He is our loving Father. He blesses us. Okay, now, but when it comes to the assignment, then very often people forget about it. So I'm going to explain that more fully later. Okay, first we want to understand God's wonderful nature. God is love. God is also holy. He's a holy God. He's just. He will repay us according to what we do. He's just. But His blessing far beyond, it far exceeds what we do for Him. Actually, His blessing, His salvation is all for free. So we should understand that we receive this. It's abundant grace. But it's also true that God is just. When people don't follow God, when they don't obey God, then what happens is they can lose, uh, you know, they, they lose the best blessing from God. And God has compassion for people. He cares for people and has the ability to understand all people. He understands our needs. He accepts us. He is wise. He is creative. He is selfless. He put down himself. Jesus put down himself and came on earth to to give us salvation. And then ability to plan. He can have the great greatest plan and manage everything. Now these are just some of the nature of God. God is full of uh, every good nature. That is his wonderful nature uh, that we can understand and then we will have the motivation to follow God totally. Okay, and then God's grace for us. What God does to accept us, to love us, bless us, help us, strengthen us, reward us. So we must understand God's law is what we have to do. God's grace is what He, what he does for us. So it's from God to us. So how He accepts us, how He loves us, He blesses us, helps us, he strengthens us, rewards us, He gives us everything we need. There is more, but here I just put down a few. So it's His grace. And God's grace includes His salvation. It's something He does for us. His love for us. His acceptance for us. His wonderful plan in our lives. And He draws us to believe in Jesus through the work of the Holy Spirit and God's Word. He draws us to believe in Him. That is His work, to draw us to believe in Him. The Holy Spirit continues to work in our lives. So He continues to work in our life. That Holy Spirit doesn't give up. And then, 
protection. He protects us and prepare wonderful things in all areas of our lives to bless us. And uh, so every uh, every area of our life, He wants to bless, and He raises our lives to a higher level, and He trains our lives and provide opportunities for us to serve Him, and provide opportunities for us to receive His blessings, and remember our good deeds, and re He will reward us and give us heaven and so on. So all these things that He does for us. So that's how we motivate people. That's very important. We don't motivate people by saying, when you love God, then you have to serve Him. Then you have to obey Him. This is all the law. Please understand this. What we do is the law. So in your message, it should not be just telling people what to do. Now we need to tell people what to do, but we should motivate them with God's grace that God is very happy with us. That is from God to us. So the distinction between the God's law and His grace is that God's grace is what He does for us to bless us. He loves us, He cares about us, He wants to bless us, He strengthens us, He does all these things for us. He rewards us, He will provide for us, all this what He does for us. So that's how we should motivate people and also in our heart. I know that when I love God and follow Him and serve Him, He will provide for me, He will do everything for me. So that is what He does for us. So that's very important to discern between what we do and what He does for us. And God's grace is what He does for us. Okay, and God's law is what God commands us to do. We should follow God's law to love God, to worship Him, to obey Him, and to submit to Him to glorify Him, to delight in Him. All these are uh, the law. Obey Him. So don't think that the law is uh, just the Old Testament law. It's in the New Testament too, what we are supposed to do, what God tell us to do, to love one another. That is God's law. And to live out God's love, to live out the nature of God. That's also God's law. That what we do, what we're supposed to do, that is the law. Okay? To live out God's love, His joy, His peace, His patience, so we have the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Have kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, humility, holiness, and to stop any sin. So this is all obeying the law. To live out His spiritual life. And then to love others. So first part here is to God. And then second part here is our life. And the third part here is what we do for others. To love others, to help others, to accept others, to be kind to them, to preach the gospel to them, to help them spiritually, to pray for them, to forgive them, to build them up, not to hurt them, to guide them and strengthen them. So this is these are what we do for people. So, so this is the law. To love God, obey Him, and to live out God's nature, and also what we do for other people. So this is the law. We don't motivate people by telling them, you have to obey. Now it's true, we have to obey. To use an il illustration in a marriage, if we just keep telling our spouse, you have to clean the house, you have to wash the dishes, you have to cook, you have to be nice to me, you have to take care of me, all this. You know, after a while, the spouse will get very tired because you keep, just keep telling me what to do. But in a marriage, we want to tell them, I'm willing to love you, care for you, I want to listen to you, I want to respond to you, I want to build up a good relationship with you, I care about you. All this is grace from people. What we do for them, for the spouse, that will motivate the spouse to respond to us and love us. The same for God. If we see that God is the source of all blessings, then we want to. Then we want to obey Him and serve Him. And we know that then, you know, uh, when we obey Him and serve Him, we'll be blessed. Some Christians just tell others what to do without telling God's grace and promise promises. So some Christians and even some messages, they just say, you have to repent and sin no more. 
you have to pray and read the Bible, you have to love God and love people, you have to support the church, you have to do evangelism, all these are true. These are what we're supposed to do. But if we're just motivated by the law, then it's like after we're saved, everything we do is obeying. It's not just obeying. We should, you know, uh, live in God's love and enjoy Him so that we have strength. So in any relationship, if there is no love, no grace, there is no joy in a relationship. Think of your relationship with your spouse, with your parents, with your children. If it's all doing, all doing something, then it's no fun and no motivation. But if we always say, God is, uh, you know, like uh, with our spouse or parents or children, we love each other, they care about us, they are uh, nice to us, they help us, then we feel happy, then we feel motivated to respond with love. So that's the same with God. So we must understand the distinction between grace and law. And then so when we preach a message, we make sure to put in a lot of grace to motivate people. But at the same time, we do have the law to remind people and to warn people. I'll explain that in a moment. Okay, and then some Christians just motivate others with, to change by criticism without telling God's grace and promises, just by criticism. You have not prayed much, so you have to pray. Uh, you have not repented of your sins and God is punishing you, so you have to repent. Um, and then you don't have love for God, so you have to repent and, and love God. Now, this is all true. This is all true. But God doesn't just tell us, you have sinned, you have sinned, so you have to repent. God tells us that when we repent and obey Him, He's very happy. The whole heaven rejoice for us. So we understand it's God's grace that motivates us to repent and to obey Him. So we motivate people to change by telling them God loves us greatly. God has made us very precious and has wonderful plans in our lives. And we will be greatly blessed. So He loves us greatly. He uh, made us very precious and He has a wonderful plan and we'll be greatly blessed by God when we trust in Him, love Him, obey and serve Him. So when we follow Him, He, he is very happy and He will bless us. And then this is the law. There is destruction when we sin, disobey God and don't have a close relationship with God. Now, it's true that every way we disobey God, there will be a uh, bad consequence. There will be dis de destruction to a certain level. There will be punishment. So we need to understand that, um, you know, when we motivate people with God's grace, it doesn't mean that people can just choose to obey or not to obey. When they choose not to obey, they will bear the consequence. We must understand that there is a reminder from the law and a warning from the law. But that should not be the main motivation. If that is the motiva main motivation, then we will be saying, I have to obey God. If not, God will punish me. So that is a negative motivation. But it should not be the main motivation. We should not be like animals that we, we have to beat the animal to obey. So we should be obeying God out of willingness and we know that God is very happy with me and He will, he will bless me. So that is motivation by God's grace. God's law does give us motivation and warning, but it should not be the main motivation. So, there is a motivation from God's law, but it should not be the main motivation. Galatians 6, 8, For he who sows his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption or destruction in some translation. So when we sow to the flesh, when we follow our sinful nature, will from of the flesh reap this corruption. So when people follow the flesh, the sinful nature, they will receive corruption or destruction. John 5, 14, Sin no more, lest a worse thing comes to you. So when we sin, worse things can come to us. So it's, there will be bad consequences when we sin. Matthew 25, 45, Inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me, 
and this will go away into its everlasting punishment. So for those who did not do it to, the, to Jesus' brothers, then they did not do it to Jesus, and they will go into everlasting punishment. So for, for people who claim to be Christians, but they don't obey God, they don't serve God, they don't uh, do nice things to Jesus' brothers, to the Christians, then that means there is something wrong with the faith and they can go into eternal punishment. We are not saved by doing good, but when we are saved by grace, then we'll change and we'll obey God. Okay, motivation for people to love God. So this is our motivation. Now here, I put here, God's nature, grace, and law. We should have all these elements, God's nature, His grace, and His law. He is love, and He always loves every person. So motivation for us to love God. Why? Because God is love, and He always loves every person. And He gives us love. He, put loves, he puts love in our hearts. And then grace. He who is born of God will love. That when we are born of God, He will put the nature of love inside us so that we will care about people and love people. And it's also grace. When we love God, God will prepare for us wonderful things that the human mind cannot think of. So eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and the human mind cannot think of the things that God has prepared for those who love Him. So when we love Him, He'll prepare for us things that we can never imagine. So when we believe in God, I hope you believe that too. When we love God, He will pour blessings into our lives. And then grace, when we love God, He will set us on high and honor us. That's in Psalm 91. So when we love God, He will put us on a high place and honor us. We will be an honorable person that we can do greater things for God. Now there is the warning from the law also. Cursed is a person who does not love God. So when a person does not love God, he's cursed. So this is the warning that we have no choice but to obey God. When we obey God, God will remember and will bless us. So that should be in our that should be our main motivation. When I love God, God is very happy for sure he'll he'll remember that I love him and he will reward me and he'll prepare for me things I can never imagine. That is the main motivation. But there should be a minor reminder and a warning that if we don't love God, we can lose salvation. When a person has zero love for God, that means he might have no spiritual life. His spiritual life is totally dead. So we should have the law as a minor motivation. So when we motivate people to love God, we always tell them, when you love God, God is very happy. God is full of love. He puts it's very important. He puts the nature of love inside us. So for every nature of God, He puts that nature into those who love Him also, who have a close relationship with Him. That He will put joy and patience and kindness and wisdom. All these things He will give to us when we have a close relationship with God. Okay? Motivation for people to obey God. So here I give you examples of how to apply it. So His nature, grace, and law. God's nature. God is holy. He obeys His own law. What I mean is, when He tells us to love people, He loves people. When He tell, tells us to, to be kind to people, to forgive people, He forgives people. He's kind to people. He wants to save people. So He obeys everything He tells us to obey. He obeys His own law. He gives us motivation to obey Him. And when we are born again, He will come into our heart to give us the motivation to, to obey Him and His grace. Okay, blessed, the grace is, blessed are those who hear God's Word and obey it. So when we hear God's Word and we obey it, blessed is us. So that is the grace. He will bless us when we obey Him. And those who obey God will enter God's wonderful plan. Romans 12, 1-2 When we offer our body as a living sacrifice, when we don't conform to the world but be transformed by the renewal of our mind, then we can discern the good and perfect and pleasing will of God. So then 
will we'll enter God's wonderful plan when we obey Him. So that's, that is a promise that He will give us His wonderful plan. So it's the grace of God means that He will give us blessings. Whenever we follow Him, we'll receive this blessing and also the opportunities and, and uh, acknowledgement and reward from God. Okay, number four, God give us strength and obey Him. So here we see that different elements of grace that we talk about. First, God, His nature, whenever, whatever He tells us to do, He has that nature, that is His nature. And then His grace, when we obey Him in that way, blessed is the person. And then this person can enter God's wonderful plan, receive more blessings. And He will give us strength to do whatever He tells us to do. He will give us strength to obey Him. And the law, only He who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter the kingdom of heaven. So the law is saying that when we disobey God, we cannot enter God's kingdom. So they cannot be saved. So that's the warning of the law. So we should have this warning. But the main thing, people should not be saying, I have to obey God, if not, I, can, I will go to hell. The main motivation is, they will say, God is so wonderful, I enjoy God, I like God, I am delighted in God, and when I obey Him, He will bless me and He will reward me. He has everything in His hand. All the blessings and all the resources, all the opportunities are in His hand. Everything is in His control. When we love and obey Him, He will give to us. So this is motivation by God's grace. So I hope you all understand this, and then when you don't understand, please send it to me and ask questions so that I will explain more fully. Motivation for people to follow the Great Commission, okay, to preach the Gospel. So there's God's nature, grace, and law. God's nature is God is compassionate. He wants to give salvation to people. So it's God who gives us salvation. God plans salvation. He wants to give us salvation. Grace. Jesus promised to be with those who follow the Great Commission. So Jesus said, I'll be with you always when you go and make disciples of all nations and teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. Then I'll be with you always to the end of ages, of the ages. So when we follow the Great Commission, He promised to be with us when we follow the Great Commission. And grace, He desires mercy. When we have compassion on people, God is pleased and He will reward us greatly. So He desires mercy. When He see a merciful person, God is very happy and God will reward that person. And His grace, He gives us power and miracles to accompany our evangelism. So He gives us the ability to follow His nature, to have compassion on people and, and do evangelism. That He give us power in Acts 1 8. When the Holy Spirit descends upon you, you receive power to be my witness from Jerusalem to the end of the world. And miracles will follow those who believe. All those who believe will have the miracles, have the miracles to accompany them. Okay? And then, uh, now it's very important when I'm. Uh, teaching, please only communicate with me in the leader group. I can only read message in one group only. Okay, so give us power and miracles to accompany our evangelism that we can have power and, and uh, miracles. And then the law, woe to those who don't preach the gospel. 1 Corinthians 9, 6. Woe to the person when we doesn't uh, preach the gospel. Okay, and motivation for people to pray. God's nature, He wants to have a close relationship with us and to bless us. He wants to have this close relationship. So He's very happy when we pray to Him. And He wants to bless us. Now this is grace. He knows our needs before we pray. He knows our needs already. When we abide in Jesus, He will abide in us. When we come near to God, He will come near to us. And then He will bless us. So when we... Abide in Jesus, then we'll bear much fruit and He'll be with us always when we come close to Him. So there's 
This is a motivation to pray to God. And God is pleased with those who trust in Him and have a close relationship with Him. God will be pleased with us. And God will raise our lives to a high level and give us a strong anointing when we pray often. So when we pray much, then our life will go to a higher level. We'll have more presence of God and more intelligence, more gifts and more opportunities, more blessings. So He'll raise our lives to a higher level and He'll give us a strong motivation, a strong anointing when we pray much. So when we pray much, His presence will come to us. When, when, then when we pray for people, they'll experience the Holy Spirit. And then not praying, this is the law, not praying can cause people to fall from God. If a person that have zero prayer, no, no prayer at all, he can lose his uh, relationship with God and lose his salvation. So here again, we have motivation from God's nature and His grace. There, there is a law here, but it should not be the main motivation. I use this illustration. I'm going to use different passages. And this is what we like to, I like you to do in your assignment. So the, the assignment should, uh, the assignment should um, have a Bible passage. And you explain the Bible passage. And you explain God's grace and nature there. And how it motivates us to obey these Bible passages. Okay? Matthew 7, 7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you'll find knock and it will be open to you so jesus did not just tell us keep praying keep oh, keep seeking keep knocking he doesn't just tell us what to do that is the law so this part ask is the law seek is the law knock is the law it's what we do it will be given to you that is grace so whatever god does to for us that is grace so ask and it will be given to you. God will give you all the blessings. Seek, and you will find. Seek, and then God will help you find it, and God will give it to you. And knock, it will be open to you. So, so these phrases are God's grace given to you us. He will, will find, and it will be open to us. Okay, to to write a message on this, the outline. Now the outline, um, very often we can first talk about uh, negative examples and positive examples of people who don't live out this nature. That in this case is people who don't pray. And then people who pray. So this is the negative examples and positive example. And then also we want to talk about a few things. This first example negative examples and positive examples so people don't obey God or obey God and then God's nature and His grace and three why many people don't receive these blessings and how so these are very important how and His grace and nature so here is here I start with grace God can answer our prayer because He cares about our needs he wants to bless us and He has the ability to fulfill, fulfill our needs. So He can answer our prayer because He cares about our needs. He cares about what we need and He knows our need before we pray. And He wants to bless us and He has the ability to fulfill our needs. So this is His nature to motivate us to pray. He answers our prayer, He knows our needs and He wants to bless us and He can fulfill our needs. And then two, many people don't have faith. Now this is a negative example. When they pray because they don't believe that God wants to bless all sincere Christians. So many Christians don't have faith. They, when they pray, they just pray, they just try to pray. Instead of believing that God can really do wonderful things for us. So that's why many people don't, have, uh, don't pray. Because they don't believe that God will really answer the prayer. They don't believe that. God is that gracious. And number three, how we can have faith in God and when we pray. So how we can have faith. Okay, now here I don't list out how. And I, this is just an outline, but I'm going to explain this more. Okay, if I preach a sermon like this. 
so when you do the assignment I want you to write a sermon it's talking to the people it's explaining to people so first is that why we should pray so this uh, theme why we should pray because Jesus has promised us that when we ask it will be given to you seek and you'll find knock and it will be open to you so God knows our needs and he cares about our needs this is his nature he wants to bless us he wants to give us what we need and then so he promised in this Bible verse ask and it will be given to you seek and you'll find knock it will be open to you so this is God's promise he will promise he promised to give us these blessings and then many people don't have faith because they they think that God you know there can be cannot be something so good that you just pray to him and he'll give you so many people don't believe that they think that this is just story just a story you know even Christians who go to church sometimes they don't believe that when they pray God will really hear the prayer and respond to the prayer they don't believe that so that's the, the reason why people don't have faith and then how we can have faith in God when we pray okay so here I'm going to list a few so this is not in the this is brief outline here how we can have faith in God when we pray first because the Bible promised us that God will hear a prayer and seek and will find knock and will it will be open to us so he has promised us to respond to our prayers he has promised us that and also we have experienced that ourselves that so many times when we pray God does give us what we need what we uh, what is good for us that God has a wonderful plan so God does give us uh, uh, this blessing so how we can have faith believe the promises in the Bible believe that God will keep the promises and also remember how God has blessed us and also exercise our faith by praying more and praying for other people praying for change in our lives and the change of other people's life and then when we see changes we'll say wow this is wonderful God really does answer our prayer okay so uh, so these are ways that uh, how we tell people what to do how they can have faith in God okay so this is what I want you to do uh, in your sermon it's not just outline you first have the outline and then you have the points explain more fully Matthew 10 41 he who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward and he who receives a righteous man in the name of righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward and whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple assuredly I, I say to you he shall by no means lose his reward so here Jesus gives us motivation to receive a prophet so what is the motivation what is the promise here what is the grace here that when we receive a prophet in the name, in the name of a prophet that means because he's a prophet therefore we receive the prophet then we shall receive a prophet's reward so this is Jesus promise that when we receive a prophet then he will receive his reward it doesn't mean that he will lose his reward he won't lose it but will receive it also and then he who receives a righteous man if we don't find a prophet we find a righteous man who, who obey God who follow God in the name of righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward then will receive his reward and whoever gives one of these little ones now if you find don't find a prophet and don't find a righteous man if you just find a, a little one a, a small unimportant person or a child so if we just give a cup of water cold water to that person in the name of a disciple now in Mark 9.41 it tells us that it's, it's because we are Christians because you belong to Christ and someone does it to you give you a cup of water then he will by no means lose his reward so that when we give a little one a cup of cold water then we will by no means lose the reward so here we have promises we notice that in the Bible in many commandments and many things that Jesus tells us to do he has given us promises 
So the outline, God treasures the prophets, the righteous men and the, any little ones, and He wants to bless them. So when people do good to them, God will reward them. So here, it's God treasure the prophet. He treasure the righteous man. He treasure the little ones. All these people who belong to God, God, God treasures them. God sees them as important. And He wants to bless them. He wants to bless them. So when people do good to them, God will reward them. Because God likes them. So if this re represents a prophet or a righteous man or a little one of Jesus, that when we, because God cares about them. So when we do nice things to Him, God will remember and God will reward us. So this is His nature. He treasures people. He treasures His children. God gives us a motivation and a strength to bless His people. So He gives us strength and motivation to bless His people. And why do many people don't do good to others? So why many people don't do good? Because people are selfish. People just think of themselves. People don't take the promise of Jesus seriously. He said very seriously, when we do to one of these little ones, by no means we'll lose our reward. So He has promised us. So I hope we all will say, God, whatever God promises, I will follow and I will believe. And then why do many people don't do good to others? Because they don't... Uh, okay. Here, uh, second point, God gives us the motivation and the strength to bless these people. So God is God who gives us the motivation. The motivation is that He will reward us. He will reward us and He will give us opportunities and He will bless our whole life. And also, when we can bless other people, they go to heaven, then we'll, it's a reward too, a reward of joy when we see people go to heaven. And, and why do many people don't do good to others? Because people are lazy, people think that they lose something when they do good to other people, but actually they will get more, they will get more, but many people don't, don't believe that. And how we can have stronger motivation to do good to God's servants and, and, and the little ones. So how can we have motivation to, to do good to the prophets, the righteous men and the little ones? Well, we remember, whatever we do for them, God will re reward us and He will give us their rewards. And so whatever we can do to bless people, God is very, very happy. So we are happy to bless people. So hope that we all are happy to bless people and help people to know that it's wonderful to do good to the prophets, to the righteous men and to the little ones. God is very happy. So we want to follow God and then God will remember it and He will bless us. Okay. So, and also, the more people we help, the more we see people change, we have a strong motivation. And the presence of God inside us also give us motivation. When we serve God and bless people, God give us His strong anointing, strong presence of God. So, now, with our imagination and understand, uh, understanding of the Bible, we can find more reasons why we should uh, uh, treasure these people and be nice to the Christians because then God is happy and God will raise our lives to a high level. God will use our lives greatly and our lives will go higher and higher. So I hope that we all believe that and then follow that. And so I want you to write sermons that you are speaking to people, to your members, okay?